So with this, a very warm welcome to everyone joining here today. It's my great pleasure to uh, welcome you to the first webinar um, of the week where Consumers International is celebrating 60 years um, of impact. Uh, in 1960, a pioneering group of consumer advocates recognize that consumer voices need to, do, to be incorporated in policy making. Uh, they recognize that for us to all enjoy a safe, fair and sustainable marketplace, the consumer, we as consumers need to be listened to, we need to be heard and we need to be involved. Over 60 years, uh, we have grown to a movement which now spans 100 countries and brings together 200 members around the world. We are thrilled uh, this week to be recognizing and celebrating their achievements. But not only that, not resting on our laurels, but looking to the future and thinking about how we continue to build, how we build better, and how we face the sanitary, the economic, and the climate crises together. Over the course of 60 years, our success and impact has only been because we have partnered. We have collaborated together and we have partnered with others outside the consumer movement. And it's my great pleasure to introduce uh, Sergio Mujica, who is the Secretary General of the International Organization for Standardization, a long-term partner of Consumers Interna International and the consumer movement. And I would very much like to hand over to Sergio to give some uh, reflections and uh, thoughts on Consumers International and our journey together. Sergio. Sergio, could I ask you to come off mute? The password. Sorry, my apologies. No problem. A warm welcome. Thank you very much, Elena. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you, members and friends of Consumers International who are celebrating CI's 60th anniversary today. So happy anniversary. So let me express my warm thanks to Helena for her invitation to participate in this virtual anniversary celebration and to all the participants today for your support and interest. Congratulations to everyone for this 60th anniversary. This year's pandemic has obliged us all to change plans for big events like this one and go virtual. This has also been true for ISO early in March, even before the outbreak was officially declared a uh, pandemic, we took the decision to hold all our meetings online. And this was, of course, a big change. If we compare, for example, with the year 2019, only 25% of our technical meetings were held virtually. And now this year, overnight, 100% of our meetings virtual. So this is, of course, a big challenge, but at the same time, a great opportunity. Let's imagine a huge laboratory where we can all experiment and learn together. And I'm very proud to say it now and in November 2020 that we have delivered as an organization and we keep producing our international standards in this fully virtual environment. In September, we also had to replace our General Assembly by a fully virtual event with our members. This was once again quite a challenge. We had to consider how to adapt the agenda and the decision-making process. But when it was all over, we saw that this session enjoyed the highest level of member participation we ever had. So what looked like a threat to our meeting and more broadly to our member engagement was also a new opportunity because we were able to reach more people than ever. And I'm sure that the same will be true today for CI, that this event will make a big impact and give CI's 60th anniversary the attention it deserves. 
And here is my first key message for you today. We are pleased to reaffirm our strategic partnership with CI and reaffirm our support to your strategic agenda today and going forward. It is clear that especially now, CI's role in coordinating actions to protect consumers from harm or unfair market practices is more important than ever. And this is especially true in this very difficult context we are in. If we look at the IMF, Global Economic Outlook, the latest report in October, it has been projected a 4.4 reduction in the global economy. The WTO, the World Trade Organization and report in October projected 9.2 reduction in global trade. And in many other global areas, such as poverty and hunger alleviation, health, or even schooling, they are all going through a very difficult moment. And this of course affects all of us, but especially developing countries. And the same applies to the sustainable development goals. If we look at our global agenda, what we agree a few years ago that we need to do if we wanna you know, create a better world for everyone, we are also ex experiencing difficulties. And uh, the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, already in 2019 mentioned that if we keep working at this speed by the year 2030, we will not be able to deliver over 50% of the implementation of the SDGs. And this was projected even before the pandemic. So the challenge is being even bigger now, and that gives us a strong sense of responsibility. We have a huge responsibility in our hands and also a strong sense of urgency. So in this context, Consumers International's recent strategic focus on the digital consumer reflects a clearly observable trend which has been accelerated in 2020 and will remain critical in the years to come. This focus is part of CI's aim to improve the lives of consumers around the world by empowering their engagement in society through improved digital access and reinforced online protections. Some observers have also pointed out that this year of economic disruption was an opportunity to reconsider, to rethink current production and consumption patterns and implement more sustainable ones. The long-term impact of the pandemic on this new green revolution remains to be seen. But once again, CI was visionary in raising awareness and empowering the sustainable consumer with campaigns around its Consumer Rights Day on 15 March. The COVID-19 crisis has been the immediate priority but the climate change crisis has not gone anywhere and it will still be here waiting for us when the pandemic resets. I especially mentioned the digital and sustainable consumer here because they hold some of the keys to our common future. ISO is working on initiatives that we hope will address some of the digital and sustainability challenges. We also hope that this resonates with CI's members and will boost our actions in this area. ISO has partnered with CI for many, many years to get your input on developing the standards with a consumer focus and to work together on various types of workshops to raise awareness of standards as effective consumer protection tools. I'm very proud of this. So here's my second message, key message for you today. ISO has an ongoing commitment to including consumers as indispensable stakeholders in ISO's work to produce market relevant standards. Let me share more about areas where ISO and CI are working together for a better tomorrow. The first one, of course, is the development of the new ISO strategy for the year 2030. 
Because after a long consultation process with ISO's members and partners, we have developed our new strategy 2030. And of course, CI was one of the partners that we consulted. And you did participate actually, very actively. And we are now finalizing the approval process of the strategy, and we can start its implementation early in 2021. But this is not only about the strategy, about the content of the strategy, it's also very much about the process we follow to develop that strategy. Because we follow a so-called golden cycle or circle methodology developed by Simon Sinek, a British uh, author. And the invitation is to start with the why. We normally, when, when we are doing this uh, strategic planning exercise, we normally start with the what, uh, what we do. And it's really easy, actually. We do standards, international standards. And if you want to be a little bit more sophisticated, you can go to the how, the way we do it, which is also very important. We develop standards in a transparent and inclusive manner by consensus and so on. But normally, and this applies to everyone, normally we don't ask ourselves the most important question, the why, which defines our purpose, which gives us the energy to get up in the morning. Why? Why are we doing all of this? And with that in mind, we developed our Vision 2030, making lives easier, safer, and better. And this vision is supported by three main goals, standards used everywhere, meeting global needs, and all voices heard. As you can see, this new strategy puts people at the center. It's a human-centric strategy. And our visions captures a lot of what CI also aims to achieve. It is also very well aligned with the 17 sustainable development goals, which are so important for consumers worldwide. So here's my third key message to you. The ISO strategy that will be in place until the year 2030 gives a very central role to consumers. And that's what makes us partners. The second area is defining best practice for sustainability and consumer protection. Since 1947, ISO has been producing voluntary standards that contain internationally accepted good practice in many areas that impact consumers. These standards are often used to support national legislation affecting consumer protection or sometimes to fill a gap in legislation. CI representatives participate very actively in ISO technical committees as experts to develop these standards and advocate their use. Some examples include standards on services for energy provision and services for drinking water and wastewater. CI also works closely with the ISO Committee on Consumer Policy, COPOLCO, on new standard proposals and improving consumer engagement with standards. And let me tell me, let me tell you that Helena is a distinguished member of Coupon Co Chair Advisory Groups. So she works very closely in the definition of our policies and also very closely supporting the Coupon Co Chairman, Mr. Guillermo Sugal. And related to this, ISO has created a web tool mapping its standards to the UN Sustainable Development Goals. More than 200 standards exist to support environmental protection. As an example of this, one new standard, and I promise this is the only number of standards I'm going to mention today, ISO 24521, provides guidance on the management of basic on-site domestic wastewater services. This standard has the potential to impact approximately 2.4 billion people who lack access to basic sanitation services. Furthermore, the theme of our annual World Standards Day campaign on October 14 was protecting the planet with standards, with an advanced campaign highlighting sustainable cities. Never before have standards been more instrumental in creating a sustainable future for all. 
The third area is raising awareness of standards for consumer protection. And I will briefly mention two aspects here. First, CI congresses and joint capacity building activities. That's the second one. ISO has been a regular contributor to CI's World Congress as a workshop co-organizer or panel guest. And most recently at the CI Summit in 2019, putting consumers at the heart of digital innovation, ISO and our member in the UK, DSI, jointly organized a side event on standards empowering the digital consumer. ISO has also run various training programs on consumer participation in standardization since 2003. We collaborate extensively with CI on develop these programs with the support of its consumer policy and capacity building areas. So to conclude, I would like to emphasize that although the world has changed, we need to engage and collaborate with consumers that needs remain and is even greater than ever. So thank you again, Helena and CI for being our strategic partner. My hope is that for CI and also for ISO is that we will be able to navigate the multiple challenges of our times and emerge stronger than ever. It is true, these are very difficult times, but the key word here is resilience. This is not about survival. This is about learning and improving and emerging better and stronger. ISO will continue to work together with CI and other partners to develop solutions for building a better and more sustainable world with consumers at the heart. Thank you very much and congratulations once again. Sergio, thank you for such a wonderful message of support to us. It's an absolute pleasure working with you. Um, really appreciate uh, everything you're doing to be able to engage with us and in developing out your new strategy, your success is our success. Um, I'd really love to bring into the conversation now uh, two members of our board and council. Um, I'm thrilled uh, in recognition of this uh, special address from the ISO uh, to welcome first uh, Marimutu Nadasan. He's the president of um, not only Consumers International, but also of course of the Federation of Malaysian Consumer, Consumer Associations. And uh, on the line here today, we have Saroja Sundaram. She is the executive director of Citizen Consumer and Civic Action Group in uh, India. I'm going to hand first to Marimutu and then to Saroja uh, for their response and their thoughts on the importance of standards and our relationship. Marimutu, can I come to you first? Yep. Thank you for the informative and wonderful message of the Sergio Mojica. Thank you, you two, ISO, to reaffirm the strategic partnership with Consumer International. Consumer International's recent strategy focused on digital consumer. The fact reflects clearly, noticeably, trend, and happy to hear that ISO is working on initiative to address some of the digital and sustainability challenges. To acknowledge that ISO strategy puts people at the center as of what CI aims to achieve by producing voluntary standards that contain internationally accepted good practices in many areas that impact consumers. Engaging and collaborating with consumers remains crucial today, even during the pandemic. I'm pleased it on to be accomplished through the technology. I'm happy to say that Consumer International will continue to work with ISO as a supporter to develop solutions for building a better and a more sustainable world for the benefit of consumers. I also would like to thank ISOs all the while because the consumers' participation in COPOLCO meetings are great because 
that's the only area where consumers really put their views and um, I also like to the Corpoco Secretary support consumer international members in many platforms. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you, Marimutu. And absolutely, uh, Sergio, your entire team has been uh, so wonderful uh, working through this, as I'm sure you know, but a thanks, a very special thanks to them. With that, handering, handing over to Saroja. Thank you, Helena. Uh, thank you for joining us in our 60th anniversary celebrations and delivering the special address, Mr. Sergio Mujiko. Uh, Mujika. We are honored by your presence. As consumer advocates, we recognize the crucial role that standards play in our daily life. Many thanks for the reaffirmation on our continued partnership. It is only right that we work together as this ensures that the marketplace is easier, safer, and more accessible for all consumers. So in this regard, actually, I would like to share one, uh, one thing that I observed. Uh, so CI's theme for the World Consumer Rights Day this year was the sustainable consumer. And ISO's theme for World Standards Day was protecting the planet with standards. So which go hand in hand in promoting sustainability as defined under UN's Sustainable Development Goals. As you rightly mentioned, sir, the digital and the sustainable consumer are going to be the key keys to our common future. Glad to know about ISO's work in this space and the active role that CI plays. I'm truly excited about the new standard that you mentioned about, the one that provides guidance on the management and maintenance of basic on-site domestic wastewater services and its potential to impact around 2.4 billion people, you said, uh, who lack access to basic sanitation services. So this is fantastic. I think um, uh, it, it's going to be really uh, 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 useful for uh, people and um, uh, across the world. Um, at the same time, I would like to make one observation. I, I know that the, what I'm going to say is uh, I, I like already several discussions and actions are uh, happening and there are several challenges to it as well, but I think it is very important that we continue to focus on formalization of standards worldwide so that equity, equity is ensured and consumers across the globe stand to benefit. This will also minimize the technical barriers to cross borders trade. I think this falls in line with the goals that you mentioned under your new strategy, uh, standards used everywhere, meeting global needs and all voices heard. So uh, I think it fits in uh, well with, with your goals. And with this, I would like to conclude. Thank you once again for joining us today. And we look forward to a long-term fruitful collaboration. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you, Saroja. And I can see I'm thrilled to see that on our webinar here today, we have representation from across uh, Zimbabwe, the Philippines, Lebanon, and I think we've got uh, most of the world represented um, uh, listening in. Um, Sergio, could I come back to you? Any thoughts perhaps on and, and reflections on what you heard from uh, Marimutu and Saroja? Any thoughts perhaps on looking to the future about harmonization of standards or, or the ways in which we can um, be more effective together? First of all, I'm very glad to hear that uh, my message and the remarks uh, resonated in, in the board of Consumer International. I'm, I'm honestly convinced that uh, there is a lot of room for even uh, further cooperation between our two organizations. Second, I also want to recognize my team as you did it. I think I have to say to Sean and Dana, they've been great and instrumental in improving this, this, this cooperation between the two uh, organizations. Then the, the third probably key area that I wanted to comment on based on your feedback is that uh, I think participation is key here. Uh, international standards are going to affect us all, whether we like it or not, and even using international standards is already good news. But here you have, we have the great opportunity of being a standard maker, not only a standard user, also a standard maker. And, and, and I think that that is great, but at the same time is a, a clear responsibility for us to make sure that the consumer's voice is well heard in that standard development process. 
And then about harmonization, well, I couldn't agree more with you. Um, ISO produces international standards and our value proposition here is a global solution uh, for all the world. So not only for a you know, few countries or uh, one continent, uh, but of course we do know that the other, there are other uh, standards out there and we need to make a greater effort in working together to harmonize those standards.